Hey, what's going on guys? This is Brian and Jack with Simple Men's Comics where we are helping to amplify your comic book collection through integrity and community. In this video, we are gonna talk about five new DC generation characters. We're gonna talk about those first appearances and what to be on the lookout for when you're digging in those dollar bins and back issues. Not all these are dollar bin issues, but they still can be had for an affordable price, right Jack? Absolutely. So we're gonna get into it right now, starting with that first appearance of that character, Grail. Now, I remember a couple years ago when this first came out, everyone was hyped. Everyone was buying these. There was that Alex Garner variant that everyone was buying, and it shot up in price. But where are we at right now with these, Jack? Yeah, and they've kind of come down to earth, and they're a little bit more attainable. But they've still maintained a solid demand. So really, they're not dirt cheap. They're just value pickups. Now, the thing about Grail is she kind of first appeared in the Divergence number one, the DC Comics free comic book day issue. And there seems to be a premium being paid for those copies that uh, where a store like had their logo placed on it, like Midtown Comics did. Um, that book can go for as much as $10. And then other than that, Just Sleep 40 from the New 52, first appearance, there's a also a combo pack variant, uh, if you remember when they were doing those. And then they have a that 1 in 25 Alex Garner all of which are in demand. And there's a lot of high hopes that Grail, who of course is Darkseid's daughter, will one day become a major villain in the DC Comics universe. And she seems really poised to be a natural enemy of Wonder Woman. It's funny you mentioned those combo packs. I remember back in the day, people started doing the math on what the print run or what the sales figures on those combo packs were. They kind of realized, hey, there's kind of like a ratio type here. And people start picking up on it and they're buying combo packs for everything but i digress because we're gonna get into the next one and we are talking about the other character we're talking about lobo's daughter and we are talking about crush that's right now crush is another one where we've got a very confusing first appearance we've talked about this before with three up three down now crush first appears in the teen titans special number one kind of at the end a little bit of a last page splash page and of course that issue was previewed in several other DC Comics releases, including like some small printed books like The Unexpected Number One. But Teen Titans Number 20 seems to be the market kind of nominated book for first appearance. It's the one that the CGC label has, not, has labeled as the first appearance of Crush. So Crush being Lobo's daughter, having like a big storyline in the Teen Titans book through the Rebirth series, kind of becoming from a, a Teen Titans member, to a big heel turn into this like villain uh, standing alongside her father. That book has seen some slight increased popularity, but is still an under the radar pickup. And it was a book that just a year ago was a dollar bin book. There's also an incentive with a design variant that features Crush on that cover. And, and we all know that DC Comics incentive variants are not very common. So that's one to keep an eye out for. Yeah, the, nothing to know about that Teen Titans number 20 is talk about the teen titans special number one when teen titans 20 came out it's just like that whole dylan brock thing where you keep waiting this is going to be the issue this is going to be the issue people were aware people were ordering people were pre-ordering that teen titans number 20 so that's another reason why you can get that book and you can get it for a decent price right now because a lot of people weren't caught off guard on it they were waiting for it to happen so a lot of people bought that book up when it came out and then the next young dc character that we're going to talk about is Naomi. I haven't talked about this name in a while. I know six months ago we were talking about it a lot, but either way, still a good character. I know I'm a fan favorite. I believe Jack's a fan favorite as well. This is one that we do have faith in Brian Michael Bendis with, but Naomi, what are these books at right now, Jack? Well, they, they've really dropped down a bit. We've seen the kind of the first uh, print go for around that kind of $50 level, some dropping as low as like 40, um, and even some occasional sales into the 30s. It's really a wide spectrum of pricing. Um, and it's kind of gone week to week when there's been kind of some talk about Naomi with her appearing in new books, there's been a little spike. Um, she appeared in Action Comics, she appeared on the cover of some variants. We saw a little spike back up. And then it kind of came back down to earth again. And then she shows up with Young Justice, looks like she's gonna be a Young Justice team member and we see a little spike. It's really kind of tough because we just don't know yet what Naomi's place in the DC universe is. Batman was really trying to figure this out in the action comics. We haven't quite gotten there yet. 
Um, I'm, I've said this several times on the channel. You got to follow the money. DC has put a lot of energy and effort into promoting her. They've put a lot of energy and effort into bringing Brian Michael Bendis into the fold and a lot of money. And because of that, I have to believe that they have big plans for Naomi. But I think that right now, if you were looking at Naomi maybe a year ago and you were on the fence, which it doesn't seem like there was a lot of people on the fence, right, Brian? This is a polarizing character. People either were on the Naomi train or they were staunchly against it. But the kind of prices have come down to a level where you can reasonably see making an investment play. A first print of a first print nine, eight graded CGC copy can be had for around $125, $135, which is far less than the height of $500 that that book was trading for. Yeah. And I was always, um, well, I mean, we, we always mention how it got mainstream media attention yeah. and they were always showing that cover a, but I was always like, how come that Emanuel Lupacino variant, although not my favorite cover, but it's still really, really lagged behind in value as as far as how that cover a one right right definitely it's, it's by far um the less valuable of the two um so and i think there's growth potential within that book maybe more than the first print because of the fact that it's, it's kind of got more room to grow but we'll have to wait and see uh it, you know there's also a second print which can go for like 15 dollars, and maybe one to keep an eye on as well right now these next two we're going to talk about they're well known, especially this one. Prices are cheaper, but it's not a cheap book. And we're going to talk about the character of Damian Wayne, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, obviously, uh, with you know Batman six fifty five, Batman six sixty six, um, Batman six fifty six fifty seven, um, all four of those books um, are popular books, and they they all sell for decent prices. Um, they've come down off the say demand of about three years ago when this character was kind of red hot. Nonetheless, I think that just comes because DC hasn't necessarily progressed the character. Um, this whole Super Sons thing didn't really do a lot to like spike Damien kind of on the secondary market. But we know that they've got to get somewhere with him eventually. Eventually somebody's going to tell the story of Bruce Wayne passing that mantle on or Damien becoming whatever he's going to become as an adult. And that's been the key. You and I have talked about that several times. It's kind of aging up some of these young DC Comics characters. It's really going to be the key of who kind of makes it to that next level. Damian Wayne, either way, is an amazing character. He's entertaining. He gives a, a kind of good difference to Batman. Um, they have a lot of similarities, but then there's some differences in there as well. His ruthless nature, um, his kind of tongue-in-cheek humor. He's a show stealer in any animated film he's in including the Batman Ninja Turtles film, he's really funny in, and, uh, uh, you know, plays really well off, like, his respect for Raphael, who kind of has that same attitude, and, um, you know, I, I think that this is a blue chip DC Comics character. Uh, if you're at all interested in DC Comics characters who have an opportunity to rise in the future, I think the first place you start is Damian Wayne. Yeah, we did talk about this recently on the three up, three down. We're talking about how the prices are down on this. I'm of that mindset. If you need to pick some of these books up now for your PC, this is the perfect opportunity, especially that 655 variant. A couple of years ago, that one like entered the stratosphere. Right. It's come down a little bit, be a good buying opportunity. Damian Wayne, great character. And people don't like the Super Sons. I love the Super Sons. It's one of my favorite reads. But either way, the next one we're talking about is the other Super Son, and we're talking about John Kent. A lot of people talk about what, Convergence number two being the first appearance? Yeah, without a doubt. That's the birth of Jonathan Kent. Um, now, there's several books with Jonathan Kent that kind of split the opinion, but it seems like Convergence number two has solidly become that book. Now, the artist on that book and the artist also on Lois and Clark number one, which is also the other book that people were kind of picking at, uh, Lee Weeks, I interviewed him a number of years ago. He said, without a doubt, Convergence number two would be the book to get. That's the first appearance. He said to me, well, I literally drew his birth. So why wouldn't anything, why wouldn't that be the first appearance? It's his first appearance on earth. So, um, you know, but that logic obviously is oftentimes lost on comic book collectors. Um, now, Convergence Superman 2 has two covers. You've got the regular cover and then a Chip Kid variant. And what hurt this book for a long time is first off, the Convergence storyline was terrible. Second off, those Chip Kid variants left a lot to be desired. Half of the um, of the covers were just one solid color. With Superman, it was blue. Uh, so these books were dollar bin fodder for a long time. 
Then the Lois and Clark story comes out and it's such an amazing read that it really brought people in. And it brought a lot of non-Superman readers, myself included, into reading Superman. And because of that, then people went back and grabbed Convergence 2. Now, I think Convergence 2 and Lois and Clark number one are important. Lois and Clark number one really gives you kind of the story of what Superman's life is at this point, his raising of Jonathan, um, Lois's role in the whole thing. It's, it's really an amazing story. And then number eight is an iconic cover. I think that's always going to be a book. That's the uh, white one where he's opening up the... And he sees the Superboy suit. So, yeah. you know, um, I, that's, you could argue that's when he becomes Superboy. Um, so that is going to be an also an uh, absolutely valuable book. And then a book that ties into both of the last two characters that we talked about is Superman number 10. That book shows the meeting. Of oh, yeah, that was a great cover too. It's like the intro of the Super cover. Sons. Yeah, the Super Sons meeting each other. Batman and Superman on the cover with their respective sons. They're meeting each other face to face. Um, you could call that the first appearance of the Super Sons. If the Super Sons ever become something, but whether it's you know as kids or as adults, as far as other media outside of comics, that would probably be a major book to spike. It's got some popularity because of like, same with, with number eight, kind of iconic cover, um, but it's a book to grab now because I think wherever Jonathan Kent goes, Damian Wayne is going to go. And wherever Damian Wayne goes, Jonathan Kent's going to go. I, I think these two are going to forever be linked with each other. Same way Batman and Superman are. Yeah, I think didn't just John Kent have Damian and Legion of Superheroes at the past issue or something? Yep. But also that Lois and Clark number one you're talking about, that also has a nice variant that was really up there as well a couple years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That incentive variant. Like we said, DC doesn't do a ton of incentive variants. And when they do, and it happens to land on a key issue, those can be the ones to get. So, so there it is. We talked about five of those new young DC generation characters and some back issues to be on the lookout for. Let us know, do you have any of these? Are you interested in picking any of these up? Or are there some other issues that us and the viewers should be aware of? Put all that down in the comments. Also click that thumbs up button for us. And we're doing these videos all the time. We just had Marvel villains in our previous video. We got Star Wars one sitting out there. We got Green Lantern back issues. So make sure you hit that subscribe button hit that bell notification. That way you'll be notified whenever a new video drops. That being said, this is Brian and Jack for Superman's Comics. See you guys in the next video.